season of giving, but sometimes when there's a season of giving, there's also the opportunity for scammers to come out of the woodworks. And joining me now is Brenda Price with AARP, and she's going to share information on how to be on the lookout for charitable scams. Now, Brenda, can you share with us why this season is such a big time for scammers to, you know, start those charitable scams? Yes, uh, it is the season. Uh, it is the season because this time of the year, people are in a good mood. They're festive, open to talking to people, and, and their hearts are open, and so are their wallets. What would you say a charitable scam even looks like for those who don't know? A charitable scam can come in different forms. It comes right into your home via your computer, uh, an email request or a web page requesting a donation. The emails will look like they come from the reputable charity that you may have supported in the past. But if you look closely at any email requesting funding, make sure that the logo is accurate. It looks like the one that you are familiar with. Matter of fact, pull up that logo on another web page on the host organization's web page just to see if they match. Look at the wording and the spelling of the email and the organization. Those are things to look for electronically. When you're in a store, one of the things you want to do if you were purchasing a gift card is to make sure you purchase the gift card that is closest to the register because those also get uh, messed with by scammers. They steal them, take them out, reconfigure them, and then put them back in the store. And when you purchase them and get ready to use them or whoever you're giving the gift to plans to use them, there's no money on the card. Yeah, and how many people fall victim to charitable scams and what age, age range do you say is the most vulnerable? Interesting enough, their age range, the assumption might be that it is older adults, and it is. Older adults by the hundreds of thousands become victims or potential victims uh, for scammers. But young people are also victims because they use the digital world. They shop online, they make purchases online. So they are just as subjected to a potential scam as anybody. Is there any embarrassment behind reporting, you know, not just charitable scams, but scams in general, specifically for that older population? Older people tend to be more quiet when they are the victim of or even have been a target of. But being quiet does not help your friends and your family. So you need to tell friends, family, and your community that you were a target. Give them the information so that they can be aware. Also report it to the police, whether you are an actual victim or just a target. If you go to aarp.org, you can learn which sources are reputable for you to be able to learn more about what's going on. The AARP Fraud Watch Network will actually allow you to plug in your zip code and then the information that comes back is those scams that are going on in your zip code at the present time. All right, well, such great advice, Brenda. I appreciate you taking the time to share that information with us. Hopefully everyone at home will jot all those details down so they can stay safe and not be a victim of any scam. Thank you so much.